wanna find me, yeah, I'm in the front row. Got my two tickets, homie, I'm in the front row. The best place to be, I'm in the front row. All right, in the front row.com, in the front row podcast. We are back. It is a glorious, glorious time here in Los Angeles. We are ecstatic. I don't know. Words can't put in. I can't. I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. It's. I'm. I'm walking on air. It feels pretty good right now. And I've never even been a fan of the guy, but you know, joining me right now, who's gonna explain to you guys our happiness? Danny Cohen. Danny, we're loving this, right? LeBron James. Man, uh, you know, it seems like the, since uh, he signed, you know, the sun is always shining out here in L.A., but it seems like it's, like, shining a little brighter, you know? That's right. I mean, I've got a little bounce in my stuff. I'm looking around the city. Everyone's got a little bounce in their stuff already, you know? But the king is here, and uh, the anticipation is unlike anything that I can remember, probably since, you know, Shaq and Kobe came. So everyone's uh, excited. I'm excited. And, man, can the season start tomorrow, or... Yeah, seriously. I mean, I would. I wish tomorrow was October. No lie. I want. I want training camp to get started. I want to see how this roster is going to finalize. The biggest thing for me getting LeBron was like, boom! Like, not only did we get a domino to fall, but we got the biggest domino of all of them to fall. And now, like, I think it's going to be, you know, I think the floodgates are going to open. I think we're going to see. You know, you already see with the rumors with Kawhi Leonard, like now that LeBron is here, he wants to be here that much more. You're seeing guys do uh, cryptic tweets in Damian Lillard, which we'll get to later on in the show. But I mean, I, I think this is just the first domino to fall and other other free agents that were that signed recently. It kind of made us all scratch our head a little bit. But, you know, I think Magic is setting this thing in a in a, in a, in a new direction. Uh, I don't know. Danny, have you heard? Any of the uh, reports on why Magic Johnson is signing guys like Rondo and Lance Stevenson and uh, JaVale McGee? Yeah, I'm, um, they want they want playmakers out there. You know, LeBron's getting into the later stages of his career. You know, they consulted LeBron on these deals before they made them. And, you know, LeBron's got a lot of models on him. He's been to a straight final. Um, he's been going nonstop deep into the playoffs since he, pretty much since he came to the league. You know, I'm also playing Olympics and all that stuff. So he's got, you know, some of the most mileage on him in NBA history already. And he's all just, you know, turning 34 in December. So they were looking to get, you know, bring in playmakers, guys that can create for others other than LeBron. So LeBron could, you know, play a little off ball. And uh, I think, you know, LeBron's looking at, I was reading an article, I think it was Brian Windhorst of ESPN, was talking about how LeBron has studied the greats of the NBA. He studied Kobe. He studied Jordan. And he knows that you know, those guys later in their career when their athleticism started to fade, that they went to the post, right? Yep. And LeBron is already looking at, you know, working on that post game. I want to be down low. I want to be, you know, uh, back in the day when Magic was playing, he was always backing guys down, posting up, and he had that great vision just like LeBron had. And so he's gonna, we're going to have that. Uh, uh, um, and then also... LeBron's a you know, better uh, offensive player than Magic was, so he's a bigger threat on the block there. So it's going to be fun to watch. Um, my concern with the guys I brought in, of course, though, is, yeah, I love that Rondo and Stevenson. They can make plays for themselves, but, man, they're going to be open for shots when when LeBron's got the ball in. I'm not that confident they can knock it down. Yeah, that that was a head-scratcher. I mean, it, right now it's, it's a league of scoring, a league of shooters. I mean, all the top teams in the league – they launch threes all day long, and they hit threes all day long. Lakers are kind of going in the opposite direction. I've heard reports here and there of Magic saying, you know, we want to, like you said, we want the playmakers, but they also want that that tough, nitty-gritty, defensive-minded guys who are going to lock you up and get all in you, up and down that court, not give you any breathing room. It looks like that's what he's, that's what he's headed for. Now, I think the biggest head-scratcher was, you know, last year at this time, or a few months, actually probably about two or three weeks before this time, is we draft Lonzo Ball, and Magic Johnson goes off, and he says a whole bunch of stuff that kind of made everyone else scratch their head, puts a lot of uh, expectation and pressure on Lonzo Ball. Don't break all my records. Your name's going to be up in that rafter. Your jersey's going to hang. Like, And then now it's kind of like he's pretending like he didn't say any of that. He signs LeBron James, and now he, he signs Rajon Rondo, who's virtually the same player... As Lonzo Ball, just maybe a little bit less athletic on the 
as far as the leaping ability, but how did you feel when you heard that Rondo Ball signing came through? No, the first thing I thought was, we already have a Rondo, don't we? I mean, we already yeah. have a uh, Rondo. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, have a, we have Rondo on our team. He's Rondo Ball. He's the same player. He's a great passer. He's a guy that has always been compared to Rondo because, unfortunately, he struggles also from his outside shot, but he has that special vision that, uh, you know, he's a great ball handler. He's a good rebounder for a guard. Um, prime Rondo before the injuries early in his career was amazing. You know, he was a guy that was underrated. He was a guy that we had a lot of battles with in the finals, uh, going up against Kobe, back and forth. But he's a guy that Magic always coveted. Um, if you look back in Magic's tweets, some of them are really funny. I, I uh, encourage the audience to go read Magic's tweets, especially his past like two, three years ago when he was on TV. Um, they don't give you that much confidence that he's going to be a great GM because of the things that he said. But also, Magic oh my gosh, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, but he loved Rondo. But Magic is a male, <laughs> you know. That's that's his, that's him. That's his personality. He hypes guys. You know, that's why he came in and he hyped Rondo, right? He hyped these guys because he wants to give them confidence. You know, he wants to give them, you know, let them know that hey, one of the best players that's ever picked up a basketball believes in you. And so that's what he was trying to do for Lonzo, but. It's a whole different. It's a whole different ball game once LeBron James joins your team. Um, in, in the NBA, you don't win without veterans. It's never happened. You never have a just a young team that won a championship. So you, got, you know, had to bring those veterans in there. Um, I'm hoping that Rondo is a positive force for Lonzo going forward. That he's going to teach them, teach them the ways. You know, they're saying that yeah, Rondo early in his career he caused a lot of issues with, with teammates. He caused a lot of issues with coaches, but since he last year and you know last couple of years, he's been you know teammates have said they really like playing with Rondo and that he is a good leader and that they have learned a lot from him. And so I'm hoping he can do that for Lon for Lonzo. Um, I don't think they're going to be on the court at the same time. And you know we needed somebody that to back up Lonzo because last look at last year, right? Lonzo missed a lot of games, and when he was out, who did we have a point guard? You know, Caruso, Tyler Ennis. I mean, these guys are not. NBA players. Um, so now we got a real guy in there. We got Rajon Rondo, you know. So, and he's a guy that, like you said, he gets, he plays tough defense. He's been there before. He's a champion. Uh, I don't recall, you know, what team he won a championship for, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he did win a championship. And, uh, yeah, you know, Lance, Lance Stevenson as well, you know, he's a guy that, of course, they consulted with LeBron first before they signed him because they've had a lot of history going back and forth. And, I like that move because I like how bringing in a guy that um, he reminds me of Kobe back in the day, right? So Kobe, he had his rivals. They were Matt Barnes. They were Ron Artest. You know, they they got they got into fights back in the day. And what did Kobe say? He said, "Hey, I want these guys on my team, right? I want to I want to ride with these guys. So I know they care. They're trying to win. They're trying to do whatever it takes." And Lance Stevenson, I think, is that kind of guy too. So he's going to be a crowd favorite. He's going to be a guy that gets Laker fans hyped. Yeah. And that, that, oh, yeah. And, and the thing I like most of... Yeah, and the thing I like most about Lance Stevenson is that... Like, that, that care factor. Because analytics and the numbers-wise and all the percentages might not favor Lance so much. They might not pop out and be like, wow, good player. But with, you're going you're gonna to pass that eye test. You're going to see that heart, that hustle, that passion, the fire... The willingness to like get up on guys and go 100 miles an hour the whole time, and that's what LeBron likes about him. I mean, he went out, he went at LeBron like as if they were equals, and they're nowhere near. Like LeBron's a million miles ahead of the guy, and you know. But going back to Rondo, you know, you did say you see Rondo as, as being a backup to him. Um, I don't see that. I, I think Rondo's going to end up being the starter. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's another thing that I kind of have a little concerned about. I'm trying to talk myself into him being but, uh, that role model for Lonzo, but I can also see him pushing Lonzo. He's already said that, hey, I've been told that this is an open competition. And one thing about Rondo, he, he, he's one of those guys that thinks he's the best player in the world, even right now. Um, he thinks he knows he's you know, one of the smartest basketball players out there, and he's not afraid to tell you that. And uh, <laughs> uh, he's going to be trying to, I think, push Lonzo, I'm hoping that, you know, pushes Lonzo to get better, right, to work on his shot, to work on his game, so that he keeps that starting position, 
Um, but I can definitely see, you know, when the going gets tough in the playoffs in the fourth quarter, the ball's going to be in Rondo's hands over and maybe Lonzo's on the bench. But that's okay, you know. Lonzo's, what, 20 years old? You know, he's got, he's got a lot of time. He's got plenty of time to grow. Um, I saw something that said, hey, you know, LeBron, by the end of his career, if he goes four years, I mean, by, by the end of his uh, contract with the Lakers, you're going to have Ingram and Lonzo 24 years old, right? So we have a bright future and we have a bright present. So I can't complain, you know, I'm excited. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm a, I see it a little differently than you. I, I think Rondo was handpicked by LeBron and, I think he, with the words that Magic told him, like, hey, you know, you're not only getting signed to back up, you know, this, this position is open, which is crazy to me because a, 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 year, a year back, that was, long, that was Magic's guy. So, uh, well, you know, we'll see. I mean, I kind of feel in my heart of hearts that Rondo's going to end up winning that starting job just because I think his veteran know-how is going to mesh more with LeBron James. Um, I think maybe as we go throughout the season, if Lonzo's ultimately not traded, which I still think he will be traded, I just have a hunch he's going to end up in Orlando, and Orlando's going to send something. I mean, I, I know Lakers are in a hunt for picks, and I feel like Lonzo Ball is going to be that bait to maybe bring in a, another pick or so to help sweeten that deal to San Antonio to send either Ingram or Kuzma over there to bring over Kawhi. But, you know, I, you never know. Because as of right now, I guess the deal with San Antonio's kind of have, have stalled. But, you know, Danny, we have a new name that has emerged in the last 24 hours. Damian Lillard and this cryptic tweet. What, what, what are you hearing about that? Um, I just, what everyone else has heard, I bet Stephen A. Smith went out and said uh, that Dame Lillard wants to be either on the Lakers or Knicks. He prefers to be on the Blazers, but the Blazers are not competitive, which... Let's be real, they're not going to compete with the Rockets and the Wolden State and the Lakers and with now with LeBron. So he said, you know, if they, uh, he's hearing that if Dame doesn't think that they can compete, that he wants to either be in L.A. or New York. But, you know, he's still got three years left on his deal. Um, he's making the high 20 millions. He's going to be making 31, I think, by the last year. And my question for you is, would you rather have Dame Lillard or would you rather have Kawhi Leonard when you don't know if he's going to be healthy? You know, I was kind of tossing that question around in my head for most of the day. And, you know, the the way I'm looking at it is, are the Lakers going to be better with LeBron and Kawhi? Or are the Lakers going to be better with LeBron, Ingram, Kuzma, and Lillard? What's the better team? I know Kawhi's the better players, the, the third or fourth, second, third or fourth best player in the league, wherever you rank them, but... He's definitely in that top tier of guys. So are the Lakers going to be better with LeBron, Kawhi, and no cap space? Or LeBron, Lillard, who's actually like a, on a deal, considering what guys are making right now. And you also have Kuzma and Ingram in there. It, it, I mean, to me, I, I don't know. I mean, that might seem a little bit sweeter to me. Or I don't know. How, how are you seeing it? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both like, they're win-wins, right? Either way, we're happy. Um, I'd rather have Kawhi. I think Kawhi is, uh, you know, I'm banking on him coming back healthy, and I think he, when he's healthy, he's a top-five guy. I and mean, he was a guy that was supposed to be an MVP a couple of years ago before the injury. And he's a guy that fits perfectly next to LeBron because he doesn't seek the attention. And he's, he's like, you know, he's one of the best defensive players in NBA history, not just in the NBA. Um, this guy's an incredible defender. Um, but on the same note, of course, I love Dame Lillard as well. Um, ideally, we'd have both of them, right? And, and LeBron. But um, Dame Lillard, I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, I, I, I've been hearing that people saying that, oh, you know, he's not back to it. You know, Kyrie is way better than him, right? But to me, he's, it's actually pretty close between Dame Lillard and Kyrie. So, say they had switched spots, right? And Dame Lillard was in Cleveland, and he had been to three straight finals. I, I, and... And the Kyrie was in Portland, right? And they had struggled. You know, people would be saying, hey, Dame Lillard is better than Kyrie. It's not close. You know, people would be arguing for Dame Lillard. So it's all context. You know, it's the fact that, look at, you know, before LeBron came, they struggled, right? So LeBron had never came to, to back to Cleveland. And Cleveland, you know, was the state of perennial loser. And people would not be saying that he's way better than Dame Lillard, you know? So it's pretty close there between the two, really, um, in my opinion. I think Dame Lillard... 
gets a little underrated because he's out there in Portland. So I would love to see him on the Lakers. He's an incredible shooter. He can, of course, create for himself. He's a guy that is not afraid of the moment, just like Kyrie. So I would love to see him. either one of those. I'm, I'm a happy man. And I agree with you 100%. Now, going in, to, let, let me see. Last question for you here. Now, in your heart of hearts, how do you think this plays out? What Do, do you think we ultimately get Kawhi Leonard or... Do you think we start this season with all the young kids and our young core intact along with LeBron and Rondo and, and Lance? I think this is going to be our squad. I think uh, we're going to lose. We're going to use that last $5 million on Brooke Lopez, I think. I hope to. Him back. Yeah, I hope so, and I think that's going to happen. Uh, we need a starting center. We need a guy that can shoot, um, and he, he checks both those uh, boxes. So I think Brooke Lopez is coming back. I don't think that... You know, we're hearing, hearing radio silence out there and, and telling you right now, I think that's for a reason. They're going to be trying to convince Kawhi to stay. I think they saw what happened with Kyrie out in Cleveland. And, you know, Kyrie, you know, Cleveland they should have played hardball. They should have done what the Lakers did with Kobe, you know. Like, oh, we understand you're unhappy right now. Okay, but we're not going to trade you. We're going to try to trade a five-carat diamond like uh, Dr. Buss said to Kobe for five one-carat diamonds, right? We won't do it because it's just it's going to ruin our franchise. So, Cleveland should have stuck with it and tried to convince Kyrie, and I think San Antonio it's all bad, and Greg Popovich and RCB have heard not about the hand over Kawhi Leonard to the Lakers and LeBron James. That's the last thing they want to do. So I think they're going to be trying to work out, work this out with Kyrie, Ky, I mean, uh, Kawhi, and if they're not able to by the trade deadline, then they'd probably deal them at the trade deadline. But for now, I think this is our squad, and I'm, I think Brooke Lopez is coming back. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with mostly everything you say. The only thing for me is if Kawhi says, you know what, I'm not playing. I won't dribble one <laughs> one, one ball. So, I mean, you know, if, if Kawhi wants to go that hard, um, I think that's the only way that would move. If he starts to realize, like, you know what, the Spurs are going to try to keep me here and wine and dine me throughout the season and I don't want to be here, I think that's the only way, kind of like what, what Kyrie did in Cleveland. Like, you don't trade me, I'm getting knee surgery and I'm missing the season. And they kind of were like, all right, screw it, we got to trade you. And I think if Kawhi does something like that, that's the only way it could happen. But I just don't see Kawhi sitting out a whole nother season because cause then they could call him on his bluff and be like, fine, sit out again. And, yeah, I don't see it either. So we'll have to see, though. I mean, you know, I'm going both ways. I kind of want the young guys to stay, but like, I kind of want Kawhi Leonard too. So it's a kind of a spoil of riches right now. But, Danny, thank you for coming on in the front row dot com, uh, dot com again. Uh, Danny, let them know where they can find you. Yeah, so you guys, I just had um, Harrison Fagan on my podcast. It's the Serenity Now Sports Podcast. Uh, Harrison Fagan is a SB Nation Lakers insider. Uh, he's editor-in-chief of um, SilverScreenAndRoll.com, which covers all things Lakers. And so, yeah, you guys come check out my podcast. It's the Serenity Now Sports Podcast. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Google Play. Um, you can find it on our Twitter. It's at Serenity Now Pod. And, yeah, um, excited about Lakers basketball going forward. I mean, we're back. Definitely, man, 100. We'll keep these guys uh, informed all season long. We'll have Danny coming on the show a whole bunch of times because he is a, a fellow uh, reporter at InTheFrontRow.com. So, Danny, man, thanks for coming on again. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Chris. All right, no problem. All right, guys, and uh, as for me, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, at C underscore Rod Sports LA. Uh, find me there. You know, send me all the questions. And if you want to debate, I'll happily debate with anybody. But in the front row.com, check us out, YouTube, uh, and uh, iTunes for In the Front Row Podcast. All right, guys, talk to you again next week.